everybody, I'm Dr. Lisa, and today we are going to discover and discuss elbow tendonitis. The elbow is very commonly injured in climbers, and it's a very often misunderstood anatomical region just because of all the different muscles that attach there, as well as two different joints occurring in this area. So let's kind of delve into those so we understand what's going on in there, and then once we understand the anatomy, let's discuss what types of injuries arise from misuse or overuse of this anatomy. So the elbow is comprised of a hinge joint. So the hinge is between the ulna and your humerus of the upper arm. So those bones together forms this beautiful hinge that we have. There's also a rotational component of our elbow. Rotating in this fashion is actually occurring between the two bones of your lower arm um, the radius in the ulna, as well as um, the tip of that radius is actually rotating in place as you rotate. So if you stick your fingertips right up on the top of your elbow, so as I zoom in, um, here is the bone or the tip of my um, radial head, and if you stick your fingers on it and then you rotate your arm, you should feel that bone actually rotating in place. So I want you just to stick your finger on it and do some motion and see what that actually feels like. And that is motion of the radial head. If the radial head is not moving, um, it could very well be that it is bound by the muscles of the upper forearm being too tight. Um, that could very well be it or else it is stuck because of just pressure within the joint. There's so many different reasons why that bone shouldn't be or could not be moving. But as you're learning to work on yourself, it may feel as if it is not moving um, in the beginning and then as you explore one side versus the other and comparing, you might start to notice the subtlety of these joints with their motion. We call it accessory joint motion. So the elbow is very complicated even though it's a quite simplistic joint because we have the hinge motion as well as the rotational motion. So we have to keep this in mind. The muscles of the flexors and your distal finger all attach on the underside of the elbow. And if we were to zoom in, there is this little bony knob right here. Do you see it? Um, not to be confused with this one. Um, this is where all of the uh, finger flexors and wrist flexors all come down and attach on this little knob. When we flip the elbow over onto the other side, this big knob sticking out, um, and you can see all my muscles that attach there. It's because, uh, well, I use a lot for climbing, but this one is where all the extensors attach. So the wrist, uh, pulling the wrist back and then um, opening the fingers, all of those muscles come up and attach up onto this knob. And then we have our tricep muscle, which comes down the back and it does this motion. Um, and that muscle coming down the back attaches right on the bony knob in between them. So whenever we start talking pain in these regions, it's very important to understand which knob we're talking about, which bony prominence, and that helps us to understand what muscle attaches there, what motion do we do to create the, the pain in that area, and it helps us to solve it. So, quick little breakdown. If it hurts on this big bony knob on the underside, it could be an impact, or it could very well be that tricep being too tight. If it is pain on the top of the forearm, or right on this one, we call that lateral epicondylitis, or pain at the lateral epicondyle, which is this location, and that would be your wrist extensors being too tight. Um, and you can stick your hand in there and feel, are they moving, are they, are they moving under the skin, relaxing and flowing, or are they just tight, regardless of what motion you do. If you feel clicking, if you feel grinding, if it feels like it's just hard like a rock and you can't feel any motion at all, um, those are warning signs. It should be soft as you put your fingers on. It should be kind of feel like uncooked steak. And then if that muscle is tight, it might feel like a piece of wood. It might feel like a really ropey guitar string. Um, and those are all things we need to get to become loose and soft. No, that's covered in a different video. And then on the underside of the forearm, all of your wrist flexors attach on the inside of the elbow. And again, as we pointed to this little knob right here, um, and that, is, if you have pain in that area, it's called medial epicondylitis. So that's a little breakdown of anatomy of that region. Now let's discuss what treatments we do for what injuries. That is a loaded question, and it all depends upon what region is involved. So let's say this inner knob in here. 
most people that have pain on the medial epicondyle, it is primarily coming from their flexors being too tight. Uh, the muscle comes up, it becomes a tendon, and it comes and attaches right on that bone. If the muscles are too tight and they're tugging on that bone, we can have an injury of the tendon where the muscle's tugging on the tendon and the tendon starts to swell and fray. We cover this in depth in our book, Climbing Injury Solved. Um, but if that tendon starts to fray, it causes friction. And with all of the, the, the little bits that, that are sticking off the tendons, we call those speculations, as it gets more inflamed, the more friction it causes. So the more friction there is, the more drop and the more swelling is drawn into that area, and the much more likely we are to have this, this constant cycle of inflammation and overuse. If the tendon is healthy, for someone who's been climbing for years, and their tendon is built up and strong and they haven't overloaded the tendon, then it could very well be that the pain on the inside of your elbow is actually the bone itself. And the tendon is so strong, it's tugging on the bone, um, and the muscle's so tight that it's constantly loading that bony attachment. And so if that bone becomes inflamed, we call that a bone reaction or peris, uh, periostitis. Itis just means inflammation and of the periosteum or the cover over the top of the bone. And when we think of tendons attaching on a bone, it, it's kind of like a tree with its roots coming into the ground. The, the tendon comes in and then it attaches into the layer of the bone um, with what we call sharpie fibers, or these long tendrils of fiber that, that really root deep into the bone. So as you're having pain in that area, it could be that that tendon and its little fibers that are, that are inserting into the periosteum are just tugging up um, the layer of, of the periosteum. It's kind of like a, 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 I wouldn't say a plastic bag, but just a thick fiber surface. If that starts to get tugged away from the bone, we call the peri periosteal reaction. We get swelling within the bone, and that is kind of what we call a pre-stress fracture. So there are all these steps and gradients, but the more work you can do in the form to loosen this up, and if you have pain on the bony knob, wherever it's at, if it's, if it's on the underside from your tricep being too tight, if it's on the top from your flexors being too tight, um, if it's deep into the elbow uh, from, from, your, from your bicep tendon being too tight, if we can unweight these areas, they're gonna heal faster. So that involves loosening up the muscle that attaches there, um, massage is great, acupuncture is great, visit your local PT or get the tools, start working on yourself. We can help our doctors to heal us faster and the work we do is not wasted. It builds and it keeps our body healthy. So it's like driving a car and not repairing the brakes, not working on the alignment. Um, our bodies are living machines and so learning how to work on them ourselves and having people help us work on them will keep us climbing with health instead of accumulating all these injuries that eventually force us to retire or just quit because it hurts so darn bad. So things to think about. So that's the anatomy of the elbow and that's a little bit of a discussion of lateral epicondylitis, medial epicondylitis, um, triceps tendonitis, and then definitely keep in mind if you smack your bone on something, the pain could just be coming from near compression or pressure on a bony prominence. So not only can we unweight our injury by loosening up the structures that attach onto that region, but also padding it. So if you spend all day long at a desk, I know I've discussed this in previous videos, but padding where your forearm hits the table, making sure that if your elbow hurts, it's not resting on something hard. Um, it may seem like common sense, but a lot of these daily habits that we go through day in and day out, if we miss one little step, it could easily be that one little thing you're doing day in and day out that irritates it. An example of that would be if you have a, a finger injury or a pulley injury and you're always opening sharp, you know, pulling on sharp door handles. Um, that is something that can irritate the finger. So with the elbow would be resting your elbow on a hard surface or pressing on the inside or the, the, the medial epicondyle and accidentally overpressuring that. And if we already have inflammation and we already have tugging from the muscles being tight, it could easily create this issue that gets out of hand. So not every injury is an injury that needs a corticosteroid injection or needs a visit to an orthopedic doc. But a lot of these do need some attack on the home front for swelling control. Um, one of my best recommendations is if these areas are tender to the touch, an ice pack is a fantastic way to get the inflammation down and to assist our progress, our steady forward progress we're trying to maintain. So ice pack in a plastic bag, right on the skin, make sure there's no um, 
fluid or moisture in that region and then ace wrap over the top of it. And since this region is not used that much while we're icing, we're not walking around, um, we're not pumping blood into this area, definitely don't ice it for too long. So we say 15 minutes maximum. And with icing, I believe we've discussed previously, we want it to get all the way to the numb phase. A burning, aching, coldness, numbness, that's all part of the all part of the journey to getting a truly um, iced elbow. So just because it burns and aches does not mean you're getting frostbite, but the more inflamed, the more swollen it is, sometimes we just have to suffer through, and I hate to say that online, but sometimes we just have to suffer through learning how to ice and dealing with the results of the ice, which really is compressing down those vessels and squeezing out the swelling, and sometimes that's intensely painful. So don't freak out if you're icing and you're having burning or aching. So muscle work, um, swelling control, inflammation control, all things to work on with our elbow. So hopefully today's video helped you a little bit on the anatomy of the elbow, a little bit on the structures that attach there, a little bit on how tendonitis and muscles and bone reactions affect us and our treatment patterns with that. And if you have any questions, my email is uh, lifesportchiro at gmail.com and I wish you luck with this. Uh, hope to hear your, uh, your thoughts on this. Have a great day.